Update on the war. Update on the war. Yes. Ukraine, Russia, it's still going on. The Russians have not won yet. Indeed, it actually looks like they might be losing. Losing. Um, wonder why. So, as I told you from day one, this was not going to be a slam dunk for the Russians. All those military experts you saw everywhere else, experts you saw everywhere else that predicted uh, Russian victory, overwhelming force, uh, Ukrainians couldn't cope, modern army, uh, superior tactics, superior equipment, fantastic military. Fail. As I told you, the equipment sucks. Their strategy sucks. They have no motivation. Undisciplined army. And it looks like terrible strategy. So let's see the map. There's the map, all right? We get the map. This is the map as of the 28th of March. And you can see that over the month preceding this map, um, the Russian armies advanced towards Kiev from both the north the northeast and the east, but they'd been stuck in these positions for over two weeks. Basically, most of the progress you see at the top of the map, in the center top, most of that red, that's what uh, the red and the pink is what Russia had occupied after its invasion on 24th of February. Most of that had not changed much in two weeks. Indeed, the Russians were thought they would have taken Kiev in the first few days, they thought they would have replaced the government in Kiev in the first few days and basically dominated Ukraine or at least split it into half between the east and the west and dominated the entire east of, the Ukraine, of Ukraine. None of that happened. The Russians got bogged down in the outskirts of Kiev, both in the west, in the north, and the east. They never managed to encircle the city. Their tanks, as I predicted, not only got stuck in the mud, but more importantly, were super vulnerable to the anti-attack weapons that the Ukrainians had, the Western anti-attack mi missiles that they got from the U.S., from the U.K., and other allies, other uh, allies in the West. And the Russians were stuck for over two weeks in positions outside of Kiev, both to the east and to the west and to the north, never going south never in circling. In the south, you can see that uh, these purple is the areas that the Russians took in 2014. This is the Donbass region, and this is uh, Crimea below. The red is the areas that they have occupied since uh, February. You can see that while in the east here, they, they had been uh, targeting and trying to take Kharkiv, they had not managed to. The, 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 the Amazingly, the Ukrainians have withstood massive attacks by the Russians. Um, Mariupol um, has not been completely taken, although it's completely surrounded. It's, it's basically taken by the Russians. But the resistance there is fierce, and the casualties on the Russian side are significant, um, as they are on the Ukrainian side. So uh, Russia has achieved its goal of connecting Crimea with the Donbass and of taking much of east, of the eastern boundary of, uh, uh, of Ukraine, uh, bordering with, uh, with Russia. But Russia has not taken the entire east of Ukraine. It has not taken the entire seashore of the Black Sea, which is what they intended. They have not taken Odessa in the south. They have not taken uh, Mykolaiv, which is another strategic point in the Russians' attempt to take the South. In other words, a month and a bit into this campaign, there was no question that the Russians were bogged down, not advancing, and it achieved very few of their short-term, at least, objectives. They had not been able to dominate the Ukrainians. Pretty pathetic given the size, training, capabilities of the Ukrainian army. But the difference I'd say the primary differences were two. One, in technology, 
the Russians were using Russian equipment, and the uh, Ukrainians, for the most part, were using Western, uh, Western equipment, and the difference there was vast. And second, motivation. The Russians were there for what? For what? Unclear, unmotivated, uninspired, whereas Ukrainians were fighting for selfish reasons. Ukrainians were fighting for their homes, they were fighting for their families, they were fighting for their land, they were fighting for their livelihood, they were fighting for their country, having been invaded. They were fighting in self-defense. They were fighting for selfish reasons. I'll take a selfish, selfishly motivated soldier any day over somebody who vaguely is fighting for some vague notion of a mother Russia. And indeed, that's how we've seen it play out. So here's a map as of, so this was the map on the 28th of March. And now we're gonna to switch to a map on the 5th of April. And you can see the big difference. The big difference is in the north and the northeast. Basically, Ukraine has reoccupied all of its territory in the north and northeast. All of the Russian fighters, equipment, tanks, they were still operational. Surrounding Kiev, on the west, on the north, and on the east of Kiev, are gone. They don't exist. Ukraine has taken back its borders all the way to Belarus, all the way to Russia in the east. Uh, many battles were fought around Sumy. Sumy now is completely in Ukrainian hands. I mean, what you're seeing here is a complete retreat, a complete failure of Russia. They went from this map, look at all the red, look at all the pink, in the upper right hand to this map with no red, no pink. They basically completely failed. Yeah, they, were f they withdrew into Belarus to refuel, resupply, and where are they going to go? They're not going to go back towards Kiev. They failed it. They're not going to reconquer the same ground. And the fact that they have to go backwards to refuel suggests to you how bad their logistics are, suggests to you how completely incompetent this strategy is, how completely amateurish everything about this on the Russian side has been. Where is the infrastructure? Where are the supply chain routes? Where is the oil, uh, oil supply? None of it held up. They had to completely withdraw. So the Ukrainians have completely destroyed the Russians in the north and the northeast. They're completely gone. Now, the stories are that the Russians will then send their military forces that are left. About half of them have been disabled. Tens of thousands of men have been killed or wounded. About half the tanks, half the armored vehicles have been lost to the Russians in the northern front. So whatever's left of those northern armies will now be shipped by train from Belarus through Russia to the eastern front to Donbass to fight over the rest of, to solidify the gains in the east. I don't think they can expand much the territory under control, but they will solidify their presence in the areas where they have already. But this is stunning. This is, nobody predicted this. Nobody predicted that the Russians would lose as they have in the north. They're still winning, arguably, in the south because they've taken territory and they're occupying that territory. But Ukrainians are making small progress, even in these areas where the Russians dominate in the south. The Ukrainians are going to be able to resupply. The Ukrainians are going to be able to send troops from the Kiev area down to the south to try to retake some of the areas that they've lost. The Ukrainians are getting resupplied with the best American equipment, the best Western European equipment, 
What are the Russians resupplying themselves with? The same tanks, the same armored vehicles that we've been being destroyed in the north. They're going to get more of them in the south. Soldiers are still as unmotivated as ever, probably more so. Ukrainians are more motivated than ever, and this brings us to this issue of war crimes. The pictures out of uh, the northern suburbs of Kiev are pretty horrific. Not surprising, but horrific. Men and women with their hands tied behind their back, shot at point-blank range. Women raped and then murdered. Hundreds of civilians killed. Civilians die in war. That's just a fact of war. And sometimes it's necessary for civilians to die in war. But to kill civilians in point blank range after their hands are tied, to rape women and kill them, is just barbarism. It's barbarism. It's the behavior of an army with no morals. It is the behavior of an army with no scruples. It is a behavior of a barbaric regime. Of course, the Russians have denied it. The Russians are saying Ukrainians did it after the fact. The problem for the Russians is that there are satellite photos showing the bodies of killed civilians showing the graves being dug while the Russians were still occupying the area. So it cannot be that Ukrainians did it. Doesn't matter. The Russian propaganda machine is pumping it out. It's not us. We didn't do it. This is all Ukrainians. This is all pretense. This is all fake video. And of course, the mouthpieces in the West are repeating those stories. You find it on Twitter. You can find it on social media everywhere. The American right, the nationalist right, is repeating Russian talking points, justifying anything Russia says, does. And we're being exposed. We're seeing exposed. The barbarism that is this nationalist authoritarian Yes, it's anti-woke ideology. This is what the new right represents. This is the kind of barbarism that so many of the right would like to see our country and countries of the West be part of. Russia today has become a symbol, a symbol of a political ideology, the ideology of nationalism, of the ideology of a new right, an ideology of brute force, ideology of muscle over mind. But it's anti-left, so they must be good guys. I think some of the most disgusting things I've seen are the attempts of the American right to justify Russian actions. And that these are the people who are going to try, who are going to win elections and be our leaders of the future. It's shocking. It's uh, it's scary. It's something I've been warning you of for a long, long time. But here it is. It's right here in front of us. Putin, the darling of the right, is acting like a Bronze Age barbarian. I'd expect the bat boys to be happy and celebrating, but the fact that there are so many on the right that are celebrating this is truly disgusting. Uh, there was a conference held by uh, the new right recently in New York about... Um, Putin and Russia and, and how the new right should 
were laid given the war in Ukraine. Of course, the ultimate war crime that Putin committed was going to war. War is the ultimate war crime. War that is unnecessary, war that is initiated, war that is to conquer. Whoa, Ashton. Takes us all the way to 600 bucks. Wow. All right. I will get to your question very soon. Promise. Ashton put in $599.99. It is the initiation of force that is the true war crime. But then to load up on a crime like that and then kill people irrespect, kill people unnecessarily, keep, kill people gratuitously. It's just the depths of barbarism. And that Germany, for example, continues to buy half a billion dollars worth of natural gas from, or a billion dollars, the numbers, they keep presenting different numbers, of gas from Russia every day, every day. And that's not going to stop. Supporting a barbaric regime, supporting a regime that does this, truly horrific. One of Freeman says the old right is a tiny minority, but is it? Is it? I mean, I don't know, alt-right, new right, I don't know how you want to categorize these modern barbarians. But the fact is that today there was a big demonstration in Berlin that was pro-Putin flying Russian flags. The fact is that, uh, that on Sunday, I think it was on Sunday or Monday, Viktor Orban won a massive victory in Hungary. He got two-thirds uh, of the parliamentary vote and he won uh, the, 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 the one by a margin of 15 points or more, a huge margin, a margin nobody expected. And he ran on a campaign that was pro-Russia. Yes, he has agreed with the EU for sanctions against Russia, but at the same time, the campaign was clearly pro-Russia. And the Hungarians are generally pro-Russia. Not a few, not a little bit, So it is truly, and, and then we have idiots like Matt Tekant here on the chat defending Russia barbarism. So maybe, maybe it's not such a tiny minority if they see it pop up in every place. They seem to demonstrate in Berlin. They seem to vote for Orban and in Russia itself. You should see the interviews they do with people in Russia who are completely 100% supportive the relatives of Ukrainians, who, when Ukrainians call them up, say, no, that cannot be, that's not happening in Ukraine. Russians don't do that. And if we did do that, then it's justified. We had to do it. We had no choice. And it's all a conspiracy theory anyway. No, I don't know that the new right, the old right, is so small. And certainly, there are significant numbers of them on the intellectual right today, significant number of Russia justifiers on the new right. Indeed, right now, the radical right and the radical left agree. The far out left, the wacky left, loves Russia, and the wacky right loves Russia. I told you always, there's more big, no big difference between them. So, no, I mean, these are scary times, not because I think Russia is a threat to the United States, it is not, 
but because of the number of people pandering to Vladimir Putin, the number of people on his side, the number of people who think he's a man's man, the number of people who think that the way to deal with the left are problems, that's the same thing, I think, is by force. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.